is Lynn Santavero, and I am the Division Manager for Library Information Technology. And uh, I wanted to do this series of classes because I, in my travels in, uh, in the library world, it became abundantly clear to me that um, a lot of folks didn't know how to protect themselves against certain cybersecurity risks. And so the Department of Homeland Security put together this really great uh, Stop, Think, Connect campaign. And we decided to bring it to the libraries. And wow, look at all you guys. So we've done one class already for parents and educators. And we've done one class for kids and their parents. And this is a class for uh, older Americans. And then, of course, we're going to have one other class that's going to focus on small business. Because as a small business, you are actually more at, uh, at risk of getting some kind of information hijacked. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Dave. He's our computer guy. And he's going to tell you a little bit about the classes that um, he offers every week for seniors. And um, go ahead, take it away. Okay. First of all, nice to see so many of you coming out for this very relevant topic and for the library to create uh, the opportunity for you to come. Talk a little louder, please. I would be happy to talk a little louder. <laughs> um, if you could take one of these and then pass them back in that direction, mm -hmm. and hopefully, essentially, it has the schedule for the different uh, eConnect uh, learning opportunities that the library offers, one of which is the library's computer club, which is uh, facilitated by myself, Computer Dave. Um, it's mostly for the PC users rather than Mac users, mm -hmm. for those of you who are primarily Mac users. But we are able to use, have access to the internet to get information to answer Mac questions. The format of the class, um, we're on our, starting our fifth year, is to, I, I offer what I think is an interesting topic for maybe the first 15, 20 minutes of the hour and a half activity. It meets the third Wednesday of each month from 4 to 5.30, if you want to put that in your calendars, but the date is on this brochure. And the, the whole purpose of the class is for you to have the opportunity to pick my brain. So what is Stop, Think, Next? So, um, President Obama, you heard him, anybody watch the speech last night? He talked about cybersecurity, obviously. Um, so he tasked the Department of Homeland Security with uh, creating an awareness campaign for all citizens to try to help us um, help them out and help ourselves out and understanding what cybersecurity means on an individual level. Uh, the Stop, Think, Connect campaign was launched in 2010 with uh, the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, but it's relevant any month of the year. Um, and so what we're trying to do is challenge you to th the American public to th be vigilant about practicing cyber hygiene, being on the lookout for cyber events, how to protect yourself, how to protect your personal information, and just learn about how to stay safe online. So is anybody willing to share how they use the internet? Well, just raise your hand if you shop online. Raise your hand if you email. Raise your hand if you social network like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, okay? So everybody raise their hand if you have, my, I, I left mine in my desk because I didn't want it to ring, but if you have a smartphone, a phone that's connected to the internet, pretty good amount of us. So what you've got in your pocket with a smartphone is a computer that's connected to the World Wide Web all the time, okay, versus just being on your desk in the kitchen or in the garage. Even when it's off? What's that? Even when it's off? Uh, even when your phone is off, it can send GPS coordinates. Yes, so we could find you. <laughs> we had to. <laughs> Does anybody want to share what their main concerns are about using the internet? How, are you worried about stuff? What about what you're hearing? Or yeah, and getting my uh, financial bank is whatever stuff hacked. 
Right. Or stolen. Stolen. Yeah. yeah. Hacked is kind of a loose term, but you know, means a lot of different things. I mean they have hack your toaster so it you know burns hotter. I guess that's a hack. But yeah, so you just want to prevent your information. Anybody else want to share about what they're worried about? Yes sir. Get a virus or a corruption system. Right, okay. There's so many passwords that I need to use. Yes. That I just decided I'm going to use only one and I can remember. Oh. And I know Ooh. I heard today yeah. that is the worst thing you do. Did you get the handout today? Okay, I'm good. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> it would be good to know. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. How to store them. Yeah, right. yeah. I'll give you some suggestions, but each, you know, it's individual. Yes. Um, I've been wondering whether I need to buy the. the Security for mm -hmm. the internet. I mean, okay. <laughs> okay. And do you have a PC or a Mac? PC. Yes. <laughs> what do you think the answer is for Mac? Yes. 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 Oh. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I would like to know if my telephone, my smartphone, yes, needs the same kind of software that I might use on my home computer. What kind of phone do you have? I have a. Android. Yes. Yes, sir. I bought a laptop, and the, I didn't realize the McAfee virus scan was the promotional 30-day version. Uh -huh. And uh, I've been trying to find a free one, and somebody gave me a suggestion and said, can we go in and change your computer? That got me worried. Yes, that uh, should and, get you worried. And that's, that's very good. Problem here. Very good cyber hygiene. That's really, anytime <laughs> anything <laughs> asks you, is it okay if we change, you have to stop, think, and then connect. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, has anybody ever had their identity stolen? Raise your hand. I'm the only one? Come on. Of course, we may not know. You may not know. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, not yet. And not yet. My primary. It happens. It happens. Um, I wouldn't say my whole identity was stolen, but I had credit card numbers stolen. Mm -hmm. And I'm a veteran, and uh, someone uh, at the Veterans Affairs Department um, took home a laptop that had all of our, like a million or two million veterans information on it. I was one of those people. I was another one. There you go. That's right. So they gave you free uh, mon credit monitoring and identity monitoring. Yeah, it happens. Do you have antivirus software and do you update it? That's, do you update it regularly? Yes. Raise your hand if you know your software is up to date. Where? Not so sure. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, too. Oh, I have a big question on that. I do, too. When yeah. you get these things and it says, uh, we want to update the yeah. yeah. software program, yeah. is it safe to go ahead and update it? Is it a software program you bought? <clears throat> oh, okay. That's the question. That's a good question to ask yourself. Did I pay hard-earned cash for this program? Did I install this program on my PC or Mac? Or did it come with it? Or did it come with it? Oh. Or did it just show up and now they're asking me <laughs> yeah. to pay for it? Uh -oh. So there's a big difference there. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. So some interesting statistics, but I guess you can tell from how we polled the audience what's what. 53% of Americans age 65 and older use the internet or email. Uh, you guys are a big target because they figured that you know enough to be dangerous. So we're going to teach you enough to be secure, hopefully by the end of the day today, and give you resources to follow up on. And of course, Dave is an excellent resource. I mean, if you have a PC laptop or something you can bring to him, bring it, make, avail yourself of this man, because any consultant anywhere in town is going to charge you $75 to $150 to do what he will do for free. So really, you should avail yourself of his services. So just like you wouldn't walk down a dark alley with money hanging out of your pockets in a bad side of town. <laughs> or a good side. Sometimes if you go online and you don't know what you're doing and you're not being cyber safe and you don't have good cyber hygiene practices, it's like walking down a dark alley in a bad part of town with money hanging out of your pockets. You have to be careful of what you do. So what we're going to do is try to go over what can happen I'm going to show you some videos that are really informative, and then we'll take questions, okay? So identity theft, obviously, is when someone steals your personal information, bank account, credit card, 
social security number, name, date of birth. My cousin had someone actually take a mortgage out in her name. Yeah. So, I mean, you can, you know, these are all anecdotal, of course, but it happens all the time. And she's an attorney. She's not, she's no ninny. She's very smart. She's pretty savvy. And it happened to her. Don't use the same press word twice. Because if they figure it out once, now they've got it everywhere. Right? And it's a pain. But you have to force yourself to learn how to give each login a distinct password. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Are passwords more important than logins to change? Well, login is like your username, right? So it's usually an email address, or sometimes they make you do a, uh, a name, you know? Mm -hmm. Mine is, I won't tell you what mine is, but <laughs> it's fine. But uh, it's not so much the, the username as the password. Okay, because they can't get anything if they don't have your password. Yes, ma'am. Will you also talk about some kinds of applications or programs yes. that are out there that? Yeah, and maybe Dave could talk to that too as well when, when the time comes. Um, choose passwords that means some that that means something to you and only you. So, um, let's say your favorite hobby is uh, stamp collecting. Right? You could choose a password that had something to do about stamp collecting in it. And why would you do that? Because it will help you remember the password. Because isn't that what always happens? It happens to me all the time. I do a new password and I just make it up on the fly and I don't add any meaning to it. And then when I try to go back and log in again a week later, I'm like, oh, geez, now I've got to hit the reset password button. And you've got to wait for the email to come and then you've got to follow the link. And then you do it all over, and how many times have we done that, right? Over and over and over again. So that's why you want to make passwords that mean something to you, but that don't give away any personal information. So no grandkids' names, no birth dates, no middle names, no last names. Pet names. Pet, pet names are good, yeah. Pet names are good, yeah. Um, and you always want them to contain a capital letter, a symbol and a number, okay? And I'm rec I recommend eight to 16 characters long, so that's really gonna be hard, right? But say it's eight, and your favorite thing is stamp collecting. You could do capital S, T, A, M, capital P, right? Capital C, zero, one, one, E, C, T, one N G exclamation point. Right? So you've spelled a word out that you can remember, but you've substituted characters in that word with sim uh, uppercase symbols and numbers. Okay? It wouldn't be a lot of choices of non alphanumeric numbers, these exclamation points, etc. The choices are not uniform. No, they're not uniform. It depends on the server that you're trying to connect to. So sometimes, most everybody will accept an exclamation point. Um, sometimes they won't accept forward slashes or backslashes. So you're just going to have to play around. And But the key is to make it be something that's meaningful to you. So like I said, don't reveal personally identifiable information. Your telephone number, your address, your social security number, insurance policy number, doctor's name, Anything that can link it back to who you really are. You want to be as anonymous as possible. Could, could I make an interjection? Sure. I just want to mention that there, whenever you're required to fill out fields, in other words, a space for a name, an address, you can use arbitrary information. You have to fill out the field. But it doesn't have to be anything real. Like people will put their real birth date, but you can make up your own, like my makeup birthday, January 1st, 1980. I use the same one every time because it's easy to remember, but it's not real. It's not even close. If you want to be like 30 years younger, you can. <laughs> I just want to offer that's a, a really good. That's a really good point. Uh, yes. There's, there, only in cases of things like online banking. If they're uh, shipping something to you, you uh, want to have your shipping, real name. You have to use real information. But in every other case, it's just all make-believe. Yeah. It's your alter ego. If you want to download the Nifty screensaver, 
of kittens. Someone had a kitten. Who had the kitten shirt on? But if you want to download a nifty screensaver, and they're going to ask you for an email, and your name and your age, which sometimes they do, because what's the, what are they trying to do? To what sell end? Stuff. Yeah. Not only to sell you stuff, but they're trying to figure out. Big data is trying to figure out who you are, so that they can market to you and drop cookies on your browser and, and figure out how old you are, and figure out where you live, and figure out what you like. So, just really good point. You know, I, when I'm doing that stuff where I know it's not absolutely essential that I put in who I really am. You know, I'll I'll be born in you know 1974. <laughs> um, yes. I watch license plates, and when I see a license plate that triggers something in my mind, yeah. I write that down, and then I yeah. get a clue. Yeah. That yeah, that's a good analogy. Like you know, a license plate. You know, not mine. No. No. <laughs> so avoid opening attachments, clicking on links, or responding to email messages from unknown senders or companies that ask for your personal information. Does anybody in here believe that your bank would ask you to fill out in an email your personal information? No. They will never do it. It will never happen. Do not trust it. The IRS is not going to ask you to fill out a personal information. It may look 100% legit. You may get this email that says it has the IRS seal on it. And it says we need urgently to contact you about, you know, your tax refund. <coughs> Please put your name and your date of birth and your address in here. Do not do it. No reputable agency anywhere in the world, private sector, public sector, anywhere will ask you to do that. Ever. If you have doubts, pick up the phone, call that agency directly, and ask them, are you trying to get in touch with me via email to get my personal information? I guarantee you they will say no. Okay? I can't stress that enough. UPS and FedEx, we have a package for you. Oh, that's a good one. I, I got one today. I manage, I have, I have eight people in my department. I got one. Employee documents. I'm like, employee documents, wow, that sounds good. And then I had to stop. I had to think. And then I was like, spam. I have no employee documents. But it's that initial hook that they're trying to get you with. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? On that phone call, be sure to get the phone call off your statement, not off. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because people can spoof websites. Do you know what I mean by spoof? No. Um, let's say I own www.phonecall.com. And I'm a legitimate business, but someone can spoof my website so that when you type in www.phonecall.com, it actually goes to a website that's not my website. It bypasses my website and can give you bogus information. Excellent point. When you're making that phone call, get it off your you know, tax refund, get it off the IRS, you know, you have to think smart. Stop, think, connect. Yes, ma'am. If you've been spoofed, though, yeah. when you look at the, uh, what do you call it, the header, mm -hmm. it won't, it, it'll, it'll say a different thing. Won't it? I mean, it'll Possibly. Like, you can't your somebody's sure, website sure. and say that it's theirs. It Domains get commandeered all the time. But won't it be slightly different? You want to depend on that, or you just want to pick, you know, so they can. I guess that's a question. Yeah, they can do that. Someone could do that. Yes. So if I've ordered something on Amazon, I always get this email that's saying sure. Amazon wants to confirm that they shipped to me. That's okay, right? Amazon wants to confirm that they well, ship. No, they, they're no, saying they, this is confirmation of your shipping. But they're not asking you for any information. They're just no, sending no. you an email, an informational email. That's true. That's different. Sometimes uh -huh. I just have ordered something and uh -huh. I get some uh, confirmation of shipping and then they ask for something. I'm afraid to click on that. Well, I would be afraid too. Yeah. I would go onto my Amazon account. Okay. Instead of clicking on the link in the email, I would go on, log into my Amazon account, mm -hmm. and any messages that they want, any information that they want from me, will be in your account. Mm -hmm. okay. So take it out of that clicking the link in the website, uh, in the email. Yes, sir. Yeah, how do you deal with, you're not on social websites, but you've got friends that are, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, twice, 
the people that have been on Facebook emailed me, then later they emailed me, don't open those documents. Yeah, well, They've hacked my account. Yeah. How do you deal with those kind of delegates? Delete. Documents? It's called a delete button. <laughs> I mean, and if you, you think it's legitimate, that's the confusing part, because well, it comes from somebody you received many of the Here's what I would do. I, I'm not on social media on purpose. I don't like it. So, um, and just because too many shenanigans go on, and I don't like that. So, <laughs> um, but if somebody, a friend of mine, emailed me a social media contact, like, "Hey, I'm trying to get you," or you know, I get a lot of LinkedIn, which is kind of the business oh, no. Facebook. Yeah. I, don't I don't do it. Yeah, I don't. I don't no. click. The, I don't click anything. My clicks are like diamonds. I'm not giving them away to nobody. <laughs> you know, what I'll do is I'll log into my linked account and then I'll see do I have any requests in there. And if you're not into social media, just delete them. Or possibly call them and say, yes. send me attachment if you didn't. Well, yeah, you can totally call a friend. Oh, happened. absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So what this campaign is designed to do is there's no one right way to keep yourself safe. You have to figure out what works for you. For me, delete. For him, he calls his friend and he said, hey, did you just invite me to Facebook? Right? Is there any benefit from taking an email of suspect nature and putting it in the spam folder? Depends on who, it depends on who your uh, ISP is, depends on which email client you're using, it depends on what antivirus and anti-spyware software you have in your machine. It depends on what kind of machine you have. It depends on if your machine is updated or not. There's so many variables that saying, like I have Comcast, I have many emails. Comcast is my junk email. This is what I recommend to people. Get a junk email that's just for stupid stuff, like ordering from Amazon, like buying stuff online, like, you know, and then there's my real email, who's the real me, right? So I have this junk email for Comcast, so every time I buy something online, which is a lot, it goes into my Comcast account. I sometimes spam, spam, this is spam, this is spam, and Comcast never does anything with it. I get the same email the next week, because now they, they just keep sending it to me. So it really depends on a lot. There's a lot of variables, but that is one thing I would recommend. Get yourself a shopping account where it's just where all your receipts go because that's who they're going to get spammed. And then leave your real account to yourself, to important things, to people you know and companies you trust. Yes? What do you think of PayPal? I don't I have a problem with PayPal. PayPal. Mm -mm. No, I, I use it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? I get 20 to 30 uh, spams a day that go right directly to spam. That's great. Who's your ISP? Who gives you your internet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Well, I, I have a Yahoo. You have a Yahoo account. Yeah. 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 Yahoo's just, better at it than Comcast, apparently. Yeah. So. And, but uh, my partner here, uh -huh. you don't get any uh, direct to spam, do you? I don't know. I don't have. Well, she's she's more no, maybe I, more I, I, than I a little more uh, cyber hygienic <laughs> than you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you get an email that looks suspect. Or is it, it, I suppose it's better not to click on, but if you accidentally do click on one yes. of the suspects, isn't it only bad if you click on something within that email, or does the email somehow have access to your account? Both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay, two more questions and then we're going to move on. Yes? I'll get you, sir. I have had uh, in the last uh, few months two occasions when I have sent a text message mm. from my smartphone. Mm -hmm. Actually, where I've received a text message mm. that looked suspicious. To yes. Me. Yes. So they can, they so can make a text Just so everybody knows, the 2015 forecast for cybersecurity, I just read this whole big paper on what they're forecasting. The whole big push now is smartphones, especially Android phones. So now the hackers have figured out and the thieves have figured out that we all have these things, these computers in our pockets, and that is where they're putting the bulk of their efforts to try to fool you because most of us don't have anything on our smartphones that, that protect us like we do on our computer. So now we're starting to get onto them, so now they're going to shift their focus from PCs and Macs to smartphones. 
One more in the gentleman in the back. Yeah, you almost can't buy an airplane ticket now without buying it online. Mm -hmm. Right. Since my McAfee went up and I don't have mm -hmm. one currently, if I wanted to buy an airplane ticket, if I came to the library and used their computers, would mm -hmm. that protect me? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not protected. You're not protected anywhere. You're not protected anywhere. You need to realize that you can do everything you can do and you can still get hammered by somebody who wants to get you. Honestly, I see it all the time. You have to assume the worst and hope for the best. I personally have identity monitoring on my child on myself, on my partner. If my dog had a social security number, I would get it on my dog. Because they, you know, you have to put things in place, measures in place. So any open Wi-Fi, we're going to watch some videos and that'll discuss this, but you cannot assume safety. You cannot assume safety. You have to be a cyber ninja. You have to expect that someone is out to get you. And that is a terrible way to live. It's a terrible way to live. And what's the remedy for that? Unplug. Yeah. Unplug. Do things more old-fashioned way than you do newfangled way. That will protect you. Call up Southwest. Hey, I need to book a flight. Talk to a person. Call a travel agent. Call a travel agent. If you go online, we're going to talk about that, but if you go online and you're putting in your information, there's things you can look for on a website that will tell you that that website is as secure as it can be. Does it guarantee that you will not get your information stolen? No. It's so that a gamble. Along with, the, with the smartphone also, if you've got it open, if That's right. you're online. That's right. They're, they're coming after smartphones, people. It's a new reality. If I don't have a smartphone, but my whole family does, yeah. and that's how they contact me, yeah. am I at risk? How are they contacting you? You know, email from sure. the smartphone. If they, they can send you a link that texting. has something in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you, a text itself is not going to put you in danger. Okay. A text with a link in it is going to put you in danger. Okay, whether I click on the no. or not. No, if you just look at that text and you go, Meh, and delete. you delete it, you're going to be okay. Okay. But if you click on that link, then you run the risk of running into something that is not going to make you a happy camper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so be sure to shred. Shredder. Buy a shredder. Buy a shredder. Buy a really good shredder. Shred everything. Shred it. It makes great worm compost. Um, <laughs> Just ripping them is not enough. No. No, I've seen, I, I used to live on the west side. Okay, let's start there, right? So the lower west side, okay? So I lived in the hood. And I can tell you that I've seen people go through people's recycle bins and pull out pieces of paper. Because if you rip it in half once and you throw it in the recycle bin, boop, all you have to do is put that credit card offer back together. Shred very important that you shred and I check my bank account every day it drives my partner crazy because I'll be like did you spend 475 at Zocalis <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh god <laughs> yes leave me alone I'm like I'm just checking <laughs> I had a credit card I had our bank card stolen so yes yeah, I had a bank card stolen a few years ago and uh, it was from Bay Federal right over here uh huh and the person who did it, they went right up to Safeway and they bought things with it and with it. And they no password was required. That's even right. I had a password. That's right. And uh, I, they told me that that was because the stores didn't want to be bothered with having to deal with passwords. Okay, so everybody hear about the whole new. Okay, so in Europe, things are totally different. In Europe, when you have a credit card, that, the magnetic stripe we have on the back of our credit cards here, mm -hmm. I can run that through any skimmer and get all your information. Um. All of it. I can put a skimmer on a gas station credit card acceptor 
And you think you're running it through the gas station, and you are, but you're also running it through mine. And then I leave it there for a couple days, and I come back a couple days later, I peel it off, I put it in my pocket, I sell it to someone for five grand, now they have all those people's information. Is there any way we can we see? Get, can you can call your bank and demand that they institute PIN codes on credit cards. This is why we are ready to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they do it all over the place. You yep. can't, you don't sign. You put your PIN number in like you do with your debit card, right? You have to know that PIN number to be able to access your account. Here in the United States, we sign. And then, does anybody check your signature? Does anybody no. look at your ID? No. no. So I, I'm starting a personal campaign that we bring in the PIN code for the credit card numbers. Yes, sir. I just got a replacement card today for this guy. So Wells Fargo. No, actually, it's a B, it's a new U.S. bank. And okay. Card. And I just got somebody in an unauthorized transaction number, mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. small amount of money, but I got it. Yep. And the point was that the new card, the replacement card, says it's no longer dependent on just the magnetic stripe, but it has some sort of chip inside mm -hmm. it. The, the recipient, the, the vendor who will use this you know, when I pay, Cannot, has to have that capability. That's right. Chip. So this is the problem with the credit card things, and that's why I'm, I'm, I want people to find people to talk to about this, because it will cost them a ton of money. Every little credit card reader will have to be changed. Imagine how many credit card readers there are in this country. Mm -hmm. So they want to act like they want to do it. They don't want to do it because they don't want to inconvenience anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, getting your stuff stolen is pretty darn inconvenient. The real reason why they don't want to do it is they want to replace all that hardware. They don't want to have to replace all the credit card readers to no longer accept the magnetic but do the chip and, ex and ask for a pin. So. Don't, I, I could go, I could wax on and on about that. It just makes me so crazy. Yes? So I I have a friend who is using some kind of a, a wallet. To Google print. wallet. Or... No, to protect... Oh, yeah, for marketing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what kind of credit cards? A magnetic stripe card. Mm -hmm. Is what you're protecting. <coughs> yes. And so somebody yes. could walk by... Yes. And if yes. my purse yes. was... Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is that wallet? It's crazy, right? Isn't it mind-blowing? I know. It must have lead in it's just, yeah, it's just a metal wallet that has lead in it so that the RFID, which is a radio frequency, uh, can't penetrate it to read your card. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is, is the PIN number recorded inside the card, too? Um. Do you have one? Not on debit cards, no. The PIN, PIN number is not, that's why PIN numbers are so much more secure because it's a two-step authentication. You have to have the card and swipe it, and then you have to have the PIN number to continue with the transaction. Whereas on the magnetic stripes, like the, the credit cards, you just swipe and you put an X, or you say debit or credit and that's it, and you don't, you don't have to do anything. We're gonna keep moving, I know it's like, ooh, well, you wanna keep talking, but I know. Um, Seeking medical advice, a lot of us do this, I do it online. Be careful where you're getting medical advice from. Don't go into chat rooms and see that some lady tried, you know, chondroitin, and now her knee is totally better. Or, you know, go to WebMD, go to, you know, um, uh, Mayo, Mayo, Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic. Mayo. you guys know, you know, don't rely on hearsay. Make sure that it's coming from a reputable source. Pharmaceutical companies create websites, you know. Oh, we were watching. I love the names of the, pharm the, the drugs that they do now. We were watching a commercial the other night, and we were all laughing about it. It was like Latuda or something. Yeah. And, you know, it was just like, who comes up with this? Anyway, uh, they, you know, they'll make websites that are like look like, oh, a legitical, legitimate medical website. They're trying to sell you something. That's not a good place to look for medical information. Look for sites ending in edu for education or .gov for government. Okay, so like I don't know uh, Harvard.edu, Harvard Medical School.edu. Hmm. That'd be a good place to look. Can anyone sounding legitimate get an edu or a gov or do, do they? You have do have to, to prove. Screen, screen you do have to prove. Screen. Yeah, but it's a little loose. <laughs> yeah. So you still have to be careful. Like I said. Assume nothing. 
Uh, shopping. Make sure the website address starts with HTTPS. S, S, S. S stands for secure. If you don't see that S on there, do not enter payment information onto that website. Look for the padlock icon at the bottom of your browser, which in indicates the site uses encryption. Has anybody ever seen that? It's like a little padlock. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want that. If you don't see that, no credit card information should be put on there. When visiting new websites or using web addresses within emails, type the website's URL directly into the address bar rather than clicking on the link. Now, some of those are like, whoa, huge, right? You know how you get those huge links? Mm -hmm. Well, you could start with just the easy part, like harvardmedicalschool.edu, and then once you get onto that website in your browser, then do a search on whatever you were looking for. What about cut and paste? Well, you could try it. I wouldn't do it. I would type it. I wouldn't cut and paste. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, use a credit card, and because credit cards have more protections, you know, like they say, okay, if you got ripped off, like when someone stole my credit card information, I called them up and I said I didn't make these charges, and they're like, oh, absolutely, Miss Santavero, we'll, but, you know, we'll get you right to our fraud department. And now I have it all set up on all of my credit cards. Anything over a certain amount, they have to call me. I get a text, and I have to voice verify. It's so cool voice verify that I actually approved that transaction. And then once I voice verify, then they let it go through. How do you do that? Um, let's see, I use, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Let me, give me a minute, I'm getting old, so I have to. Welcome to the club. Yeah, <laughs> I figured you guys could relate to that. Anyway, uh, here's some resources, AARP, the FBI, SeniorNet.org, I was checking out this, it's a pretty good website. It's got all kinds of tutorial videos and all kinds of good stuff. And then Fraud.org is another good one. So get involved. If you know friends who don't have this information, start talking about it. Um, I wouldn't download and distribute stuff. I mean, that's taking it a little far, right? And, Hey, stop thinking connect, you know. <laughs> Just, you know, get involved, talk to people you know about it, tell people you know uh, about what's happening out in the real world, and see if you can raise some awareness to stop, think, and then connect. And again, it's what each person is comfortable with, what risk level you feel okay about. So for me, I would say to myself, let's see, I know my antivirus and anti-spyware software is paid for, it's up to date, I've scanned my computer weekly, and I know it's clean. I know that my home network is a secure network, it's uh, password protected. I know that all of my bookmarks are HTTPS book bookmarks, and that they're secure servers. And so I know that when I close my browser, and if I have that checked where it says clear all your history, that it's inconvenient, but my bookmarks are safe, my computer's been scanned, I have antivirus and anti-spyware that's up to date. I feel pretty safe about that. Am I 100% safe? No. no. <laughs> yes, sir. Does it make any difference when you're done with your computer for the day when you put it to sleep, hibernate, or turn it off? I would, uh, yeah, I would, uh, personally for me, I turn it completely off. Yeah. Here at the library, on our public PCs, we use Bitdefender, B-I-T Defender. It's a really good piece of software, very lightweight, very easy on the PC. Um, the other thing we use is on our staff PCs, we use Trend Micro. T-R-E-N-D, micro, which I think is also a, a virus and antivirus. Yes. How about malware bytes? Any? Malware bytes is good. Okay. It's good, yeah. And these are going to work for, uh, for Max. see a lot of us have apples. These are going to work for Max. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Let's, let, yeah, let's talk about that. So a lot of people think that because they have a Mac, they don't need to put antivirus and anti-spyware mm -hmm. software in the machine. Mm -hmm. Please don't think that delude yourself, <laughs> okay? Here's what's happened. For the last 20 years, 95% of all computer users have been PCs. 
If I'm a guy or a person who's trying to do bad things to computers, why would I waste my time on 5% of the population, right? But Linux, which is really Unix, which is really what Mac is now, Macintoshes are Unix machines. They're based off of a Unix operating system kernel. More and more they're finding exploits because the servers that run the web are Unix servers. So hackers have figured out that they need to find exploits in Unix machines. That means Linux, Debian, Red Hat, uh, Mac OSs. So more and more you will become the target of a, a nefarious person and people who are trying to hack into your system. So you have to, have to, have to have antivirus and anti-spyware. Now what flavors of that? I'm not so up on the Mac flavors. Um, you could go to, I'm sure, like they have a Mac review of some kind, or you know, a Mac magazine, or like they have PC review that reviews all of these things. I would try to find a reputable place where they review those different offerings and pick the best one. Yes, sir. If you want to change your spyware protection, yeah. right? should you remove? The yes. Oh, that's a really good point. And then so here's the thing. I own Bitdefender, and Dave owns Trend Micro, and we do not like to play together. And so what that means for you is if that both of us are on your PC, you are screwed. <laughs> because I will stop him from working, he will try to get me to stop working because one of us wants to be the dominant software on the PC. It is not a good idea. More is not better when it comes to antivirus and anti-spyware. You want to have one. Uninstall one completely and then reboot your machine and then do the install on the, of the new one. Now, don't you have a window there, though, where you might be uh, vulnerable to something if you remove one? Well, if you unplug your computer from the internet, you won't be vulnerable. So here's the thing about PCs you buy. They are loaded with bloatware. And I'm sure Dave will back me up on this. Bloatware is stuff that they think you might want to buy that you don't need. Okay? So the first thing I do when I get a PC here, my team, we get PCs all the time, we completely take all that stuff off and we put on only what we want that we know that works. So you might see on your new PC, McAfee, Trend, Bitdefender, you know, all that, and they all are looking for you to click on the thing that says buy me, right? Uninstall all that junk. Go online, find a review, see which one you like, download it or buy the disk, and then install that one. Not only is there that, there's like, oh, print from home. Uh, you know, uh, you know, order order print cartridges. HP does this thing where there's tons of bloatware from HP. All right, so you just have to really think about what you want. The less is more, less is better. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, um, I personally won't have a ton of stuff on my computer. I just don't. Because my computer is happier when I don't have a ton of stuff on it. How do you know what you have, though? You have to, in a, in a Windows machine, you have to go into program, and you have to go into the control panel, mm -hmm. into programs. And what's it called now in Windows 7? Depends on the operating system. Add removed programs. Add removed programs or programs, files, and features. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you need help with that, He's your man. Come to his class and he will help you figure out exactly how to get there on your operating system. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about passwords and storing passwords because I know that's a problem for everybody. So um, what I do is I have a book. It has my passwords in it, the ones that I can't remember because I you know, maybe check them infrequently. Like my car insurance one, I always have a hard time remembering. It's just like you know, stuff that I don't check frequently. That is in a locked box, in a security box, in my office, hidden away. So if I forget that password, I have to go in, unlock the box, it's a combo, get it out and look at it, and then when if I update that password, I have to do the same thing. But it's fire safe, it's locked up, it's in a place hidden away. Now, could someone break into my house? get into that lockbox, jimmy the locks or whatever, and get my stuff, yeah, but that's really a lot of work for my little password book. 
<laughs> Never, ever, ever leave your passwords on sticky notes on your PC or at your desk. Don't leave them under your PC. Don't leave them in a drawer, you know, like where you just got them tucked away. I really, really strongly suggest that you keep a notebook. It's like a change log of passwords. And then lock that sucker away in a locked fireproof box. So you don't want to have them in a database no. on your computer? No. Oh. <laughs> no, you don't. You definitely don't want them on your computer because if, if somebody drops a virus or a bot onto your computer and takes control of your computer, and you won't know it, but they can do it. They can log every keystroke you make and send it off. Then if you keep it on your computer, they have every single password, <laughs> everything. They have everything. So, you know, you just separate. So everybody, please, thank you for coming. And thank you. Give us a few weeks to put everything up, but we'll have all the resources up there for you all to use. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.